Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. So this is part two in my video, Ask Photography Target Tips number 22 on M82, the Cigar Galaxy. Now hopefully you're able to catch part one. In that we talked about all about the Cigar Galaxy, how it's a Starburst Galaxy, which is, makes it a very unique one. It has a lot of HA in it. It almost looks like it's bursting from the center. And we talked about where to locate it integration time, things like that. And in that video, I mentioned that I had spent eight hours of narrow band imaging. So I was using my Optolong L Pro filter, and of course my borderline skies. And let's just say that when I stacked it all up and did a quick process, I wasn't too happy with the results. Here's the picture again. You can see not uh, a ton of detail, and in particular, you can't really see the starburst effect. A lot of that HA that should be there bursting out of it is just not showing, and I was not able to pull it out. So what I decided to do is I decided to add some narrow band uh, data to that. So what I do is I spend another four hours using my Triad Ultra filter by Radian, and I added that in with the narrow with the broadband imaging data. So that brought a total of uh, twelve hours altogether. And I combined it all, and then I processed it like with that, and I got a much better result, as you'll see at the end of this video. So what I wanted to show in part two here is just basically how to combine that data. I'm not going to go and do a full, you know, sort of process of this target. Uh, it would take far too long. I do want to do an updated sort of tutorial on how I do processing, but uh, we'll save that for another video. So in this video, I just want to briefly show you how did I combine those two sets of data. Now, I'm just going to emphasize this is the way I did it. I'm not saying it's the best way or the only way. I'm sure there is a better way um, for those who are much better with Photoshop. But for if you're new to, you know, astrography or just new to this process of combining data, this is at least a way to get you started. It worked for me and I, you know, I was very happy with the results. So just putting that out there. So here I have Photoshop open. And you can see that I have two images. So on the screen now is my... Uh, Broadband L Pro filter data, eight hours, and then the other image here is the narrow band. You can see quite a difference, and this has actually been stretched uh, a couple times. It was much darker than this, so that's the only thing I've done is I did do a couple stretches just so that we could see more stars. Because as you'll see later on in the video, we need to line these two up once we uh, put one over top of the other. So that's the only reason I did a, like two or three stretches. And I just sort of fixed the background using the levels adjustment, and that's all I've done. So to be perfectly honest with you, I think in hindsight, what I would have done next time is actually spend at least, instead of, so let's say we're imaging for 12 hours, I think next time I would try doing at least 6 hours narrow band and 6 hours broadband, maybe even reverse it, do 8 hours of narrow band and 4 hours of broadband. In particular, because of this target, what makes it so unique is that starburst effect. And, you know, a lot of galaxies out there, they don't have that. There are not really much HA in them, so you would spend most of your time on the L Pro or a similar filter. But in this case, uh, like I said, in hindsight, I think I probably would have spent uh, more time on narrowband just to get even more of that HA. But anyway, it is what it is now. So let me show you how I combine these two. So first thing to do is open both uh, images in Photoshop. And you'll see they're in the right orientation. Okay, so if this is upside down, you're going to want to flip it. Just go to image, image rotation, and then just flip it, whatever it is, 180 degrees or whatever you need to. But you want to have them in the same orientation. So again, that we can line them up. So I'm going to use my narrow band, uh, the Triad Ultra. And, I, and you can use the L Extreme for narrow band. You don't have to use the Triad Ultra. Obviously, it's very expensive. But the L Extreme will do the trick. So we're going to use this as our background, sort of our main uh, image, and then we're going to put the broadband on top of it. So we have that there. So we're going to go to our broadband. We're going to select the entire image. So Control A. There you go. You can see it's now all selected. We're going to go Control C now. That now copies it. So we've uh, selected it. Control A. We've copied it. Control C. Now we're going to flip over to the narrow band. And down here is where you want to look in our uh, layers section. We're going to go Control V. Okay. So now it's added our broadband as a layer. And uh, we can see 
can sort of change the look a little bit. But what we want to do is, because we just want, we want that HA to show. So we want the narrow band, and that's why I was saying earlier that next time I would spend equal amount or more on narrow band. We want that, we don't want that narrow band to be covered by the broadband. So what I'm going to do is, our layer one is our uh, broadband. I'm going to change the opacity and watch how, as I do it, how it changes the look of the photo. So right now it's at 100%. We're going to take that down to 40, okay? And we'll leave it at that. So now you can see we've lowered the opacity and now we can clearly see that the two images do not line up. So this is where we're going to have to manual line up. Now, this is where there might be some debate. There's automatic ways to do it. Yes, there is, but I was getting an error message saying, you know, there's an issue with how much of the photos lined up and I'm just going to show you how to do it manually. You know, it's just the safest way, but there are automatic ways to do it if you get the right conditions. But in this case, I wasn't able to do it automatically. So, but anyway, so what we do, we have our layer one selected. So that's our broadband. We're going to go control A. So again, we've selected that layer, the whole image, and then we're going to go control T. Okay. So now you can see uh, what that does is it sort of gives us a way to move that top layer and get it in line. So what I'd like to do is let's zoom in a little. Now I'm not going to sit here and you know spend a ton of time trying to get this perfect because obviously you'll do that when you go to do your own image, but I just want to show you how we do that. Let me just do something. Edit, undo. Let's just zoom in here for a second. Control T. Oh, there he is, and T. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go Control A again, Control T. And now you can see that we can move the image and try to get it more lined up. So what you're going to do is you want to take your time and get it the best you can. Focus on sort of this area here, the main stars, because at least in my case, I did a major crop. And, um, I, you know, this I don't care so much if the odd star doesn't line up perfectly out here. Here's the main area that I was concerned with. So again, I'm not going to go crazy, but you can sort of zoom in, make your adjustments, and line those stars up. And once it does, okay, click off, and then you're going to go, and you're happy with the way it's lined up, you're going to go to Layer, Flatten Image. Okay, so now you can see it's no longer two. This is now one image, and they are together for good. So then what I do from there is I simply crop in, You know, it's up to you how much you want to crop. I like to do big crops. If you, you guys know that, if you've been watching my channel for some time. Okay, and now you can do your adjustments. Now, it may not be perfect here. Again, you want, you're going to want to take your time and really line up, but you can see the idea. Now we have one image. And now what I would do, as I mentioned, I'm not going to show you everything, is start doing your adjustments. And I probably should have started with the levels adjustment just to get that black a little bit better and then sort of start from there. Now, as I mentioned, you can already see some of the HA, but the key, I'll just do one more curves adjustment just to show you. Okay, you can start to see some of that starburst effect coming up. So here's where the starburst is. I showed you in that first picture uh, in video number one. And it's very faint, at least in Boreal Night Skies with the, you know, somewhat medium size to large size telescope and what's going to happen is as you stretch and stretch this area here is going to brighten so as i've showed you in many videos i'm going to exaggerate how big an area to block off but you see let me use the lasso tool okay and then you simply go i've talked about this many times in my processing sections of my videos then you go select an inverse so now what's happening is it's protecting that bright spot and everything else will be affected by the changes you make. So whether that's just a light curves adjustment so that you don't blow out those already bright sections, and then you sort of make it blend in better 
by doing the levels after that. And so you want to take your time. Just go little by little. And then once you have done a few curves and levels and you start to see that HA, that starburst effect come, you know, start to get brighter and brighter, then you want to make subtle adjustments. Again, using the lasso tool and just selecting certain parts of the image and work on it little by little. That way you're not blowing anything out. You're still going to get, here, take this off, you're still going to get the details of the galaxy itself, but you're going to get that HA pop out. And that's what I was able to do in the final image uh, on my picture. Yeah, this is driving me nuts. You can see these aren't lined up perfect. But anyway, you get the idea. Uh, you take your time and, and you'll get them perfectly lined up. Maybe even zoom in a bit, that will help. But that's basically how you do it. So you have the two images open, as we mentioned. Uh, I used the narrow band as the base. So I copied uh, the broadband, pasted it in, changed the opacity, uh, made the adjustments to get it, you know, lined up, even though I didn't do the best job of that. And then you simply go up to layer and use this one here where it says flatten image. So once you've done that, now you've got an image with all of that data combined. And hopefully the idea is you'll still get some natural star colors um, and you get all that beautiful HA as well. So that's where you find a guy kind of got to find that balance. Uh, depending, it depends on your sky conditions, depending what filter you're using. But you know, this is the kind of imaging where if it's the first time doing it, the processing is part of it. You're going to have to probably try four or five, maybe even more, seven, eight, nine, ten times. But eventually, you'll get it where you like it. And you can think about how you could use this in other instances. So, say uh, you you have a galaxy where there really isn't much HA, but you're having uh, a trouble getting natural star colors so or say they're the other way around I should say so you're shooting in narrow band but you know we always know when you're shooting with narrow band you sacrifice natural star colors so then you want to add in some broadband maybe it's only two hours using the L Pro or something like that so you can use this um, way of processing this technique of layering on any target so it could be you know uh, an emission nebula but as we mentioned you struggle with getting those natural star colors well why not it add in a little RGB, a little, you know, broadband just for the star colors themselves. And you can add that data and you'll, and you'll see that even just a couple hours and you layer it on top with a, like a 30, 40, 50% opacity, that's going to help bring those natural star colors in. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities to use this technique and it really just adds a lot. And I'm hoping to use it a lot more in the future now that I've sort of figured out how to do it. As I mentioned, it might not be the very best way, but it worked for me. And I was happy with the final result. So without further ado, here's my final image on M82, the Cigar Galaxy. A really cool target, guys. If you got the focal length, I say go for it. It really is cool. It's tough. It's challenging. But it's very rewarding when you get it right. And uh, it's not a perfect image, but I was happy with the end result. And I look forward to maybe imaging it with my bigger scopes uh, this winter. But for now, here's my image of M82. Thanks so much, guys. See you on the next one. Take care.